If you want the 30 second version of this video and not to have to watch the rest of it to get to the meat of it, here it is. YouTube is bad business. Starting a YouTube channel is a bad idea. Making money off YouTube is a bad idea. Because even if you do everything right, even if you believe the BS dreams that they're selling you, you're putting all your eggs in one big tech corporate basket, and that basket can fall down and crush all your eggs, and there's nothing at all that you can do about it. Hello everyone, I'm Jody Bruchon. You might know me as Jody Bruchon Tech, or Politics, or Entertainment. You might know me by a lot of my different YouTube channels. I have several YouTube channels because I fractioned off different things that weren't tech related into their own channels when I found some success on YouTube. How did I become successful on YouTube? Well. In order to discuss how I became successful, we must first talk about why I am a failure. I am a failure on YouTube by choice. Two years actually ago, I made a video, and then one year ago, that video picked up and saw an immense amount of viewership and success. We're talking a couple million views. We're talking several thousand dollars worth of ad revenue. It was a video that probably brought you to this channel called Windows 11 Must Be Stopped. And the sunlight is blowing up my camera, so I apologize. Windows 11 Must Be Stopped is the video that put me in the spotlight. It is the one reason that most people know I even exist on YouTube at all, or on the internet at all. And while I'm grateful for its success, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it was some sort of amazing, clever, brilliant business maneuver, strategy. I'm not going to tell you any of that nonsense because I am not a liar that seeks to make money off of your hopes and dreams of becoming a big super duper YouTube star success. I don't care about that. I don't care if you do or don't find success on YouTube. If you do, great. More power to you. I'm here to tell you why I didn't, and why I'm comfortable with that, and why I think other people shouldn't, and why other people should be comfortable making that same choice. I chose to not become YouTube famous, so to speak. I chose to take all of that oomph, that momentum from that one video that I made that everybody saw, that got really popular and brought a lot of traffic to my channel and brought a lot of attention to me. I chose to let that die. Now, that seems like an odd choice. Why would you choose to let that die? Why would you get a popular video? Millions of views. Why would you skyrocket practically overnight in YouTube terms from 1.4,000, 1,400 subscribers to 35,000 subscribers? A growth that is frankly crazy to even think about um, in one month or so's time. Why would you take that and just squander it? Well, let me tell you why. Because YouTube is a business, and YouTube's business is making money. At the end of the day, no matter what platitudes they make about how they're all for equality and for elevating voices and all this other nonsense, at the end of the day, YouTube's about cold hard cash. And the problem is that cold hard cash is a little hard to come by in the advertising market. Now, as of the making of this video, which is about July 9th or so of 2023, there very recently has been a bit of a scandal with Google lying about their advertisements, lying about YouTube advertisements in particular, telling advertisers that they were going to have to pay for their advertisements um, when those ads were placed inappropriately in ways that violated Google's own rules um, in such a way that nobody was actually watching them. The ads were not hitting an audience that would ever use the product or service the ad was talking about, and they were basically being charged up the wazoo for nothing. Like, seriously, nothing. So because they were being charged for essentially nothing, <laughs> advertisers are not very happy right now. You know what happens every time there's a problem with advertising on YouTube? 
they've come to call them adpocalypses. Sometimes it's over some kind of feigned moral outrage, like when social justice warrior Carlos Maza decided that it would be a great idea to directly go after YouTube and say YouTube doesn't do enough to stop hateful, stop hateful people from making content. Well, you know, hateful meaning anyone he disagrees with. But it worked, at least temporarily. It gave YouTube just enough excuse to cut back on the way that they gave people money on YouTube, to change the terms of the partner program to boot anybody out that didn't have at least a thousand subscribers. In this way, as YouTube's ad revenue declined, YouTube could drop off some creators. And Wall Street Journal did a similar thing. And again, YouTube also did the same thing with that, tighten up the program give less money, uh, give less ability to make money to the people that were making the content on YouTube. The sole reason that YouTube exists is because a bunch of people do the work for free or even out of their pocket to produce stuff to shove onto YouTube and then YouTube milks money off of that. They provide the hosting and the distribution and that's about it. But here's the problem. They have to make money and YouTube doesn't make money. YouTube has never made money. YouTube was it's basically the eternal loss leader. You know those sales where someone sells something at some store for an impossibly low amount? Selling like a 4K TV five, six years ago for three or four hundred dollars. And it's like, well, how can they sell a 4K TV for such a ridiculously low price? They can't be making money off of that, surely. Well, it's because it's a loss leader. It's something that they put out there, they dangle out there to try and get money in the future, to try and get you to come in and spend money on other things that will make up for the loss of profit on the one thing. So YouTube is basically the loss leader website of the internet. It has never made money. It will probably never make money. The value in YouTube is not in the money. The value in YouTube is control over a giant social media website. It's control of the flow of information and manipulation of it. YouTube's value is not in the money, but at the end of the day, YouTube is still a business and they still, at least to some extent, have to be able to show that, hey, you know, money is a thing that's happening here. We're, we're not just some like dead website. We have to pay the bills. We, you know, those servers aren't free. Someone's got to pay up. The money matters. If the money matters on YouTube, then where's that money come from? Advertising. And what's the deal with the advertising? It's split between the creators and the website. Except for that pesky part where uh, a year or two ago, YouTube sent out this email saying, you're not in the partner program? Well, it doesn't matter. We're gonna start putting ads on videos for people even if they're not in the YouTube partner program. We're just gonna automatically advertise on those videos anyway. Even though you're not gonna get a cut, we're gonna advertise and just keep the whole cut. YouTube has been doing this nickel and dime to death deal for years and years. They constantly are tightening up the partner program just a little more. They constantly are doing something to squeeze. Like if you take a shower and you have a washcloth and it's wet and you need to dry it out. You know how you squeeze it out and the water comes out and there's plenty of water at first but it just kind of starts to dwindle and you have less and less water to squeeze out. At some point what YouTube has to deal with is there's not that much to squeeze out of this platform. There's not much more money to be made. So what do they do? They have to find new ways to wring out more water from a rag that has a finite amount of water in it. And that water is ad revenue. And the way that they do that is they either lie to advertisers to get them to pay more money or think that they're getting success when they're not or whatever, or they ding the people who they're sharing the revenue with, the creators. The only functions here, the only things that matter in this equation are advertisers put money in, Google spends the money. Google spends the money by paying out creators. So the only way to get things going is to either have more ad money come in, more create or less creator money going out. Now, people build entire businesses on YouTube. They make like Linus Tech Tips, for example, humongous tech YouTube channel. Pretty much anybody who does tech on YouTube knows who he is. Anybody who knows who Linus Tech Tips is, they know that he's huge, they know that he's a YouTube channel, but he's still a YouTube channel. What that means is that YouTube controls everything. Even if they don't, oh, Linus Media Group is its own company. Oh, Linus has all these different channels. It's not just Linus Tech Tips. He's got like Tech Quickie and all this other stuff. That's great, 
but YouTube still controls all the strings. YouTube, at any point, if it had some sort of a whim, could cut Linus Tech Tips off completely from all the money that he makes. And in fact, YouTube has done exactly this with certain political YouTubers that the people who are at YouTube don't like, but they don't want to cut off without having some kind of BS excuse so that they don't look too bad to everybody else. And they don't inspire too much fear in the people that are politically sanitary. They've cut off, uh, the main ones that come to mind are Steven Crowder and The Daily Wire. Um, cut off from YouTube revenue, why? Well, um, the terms of service are vague enough that it doesn't really matter why. They just ding them a little bit more. So YouTube can run ad revenue, uh, run ads and take money on, say, Steven Crowder or The Daily Wire's videos for a month, and they don't get it. They just don't get it. Uh, Steven Crowder, I think,'s lost his uh, monetization permanently, which doesn't stop YouTube from running ads. Guess what? YouTube makes these channels build up a huge following. They get to the point that they might have millions of subscribers, but any day, YouTube can go, we're just, um, we, we don't like you and we've decided to turn off your AdSense account temporarily or permanently, don't worry, we'll still run ads on all of your content, your whole back catalog that everybody is still watching, and we'll still keep all that money. We just won't give it to you. You just won't get any of that money. We'll keep it. How generous of you two. <clears throat> so, I was watching a video creators, it's a channel called Video Creators, um, they're a huge channel, they're a company that tries to get you, they're, they're owned by vidIQ now, and they try to get you to hire them to help you build your YouTube presence, and they sell this YouTube myth, that it's just, this whole YouTube thing is a myth, it, it's this big dream, just like a multi-level marketing company, have you ever dreamed of owning your own business, where well, you can own your own business? You know, you can sell your own product and make your own money. You can be your own hashtag girl boss and everything, man. All you have to do is completely buy into our system, be our slave, uh, work for peanuts for a long time, really hard, and eventually you might make enough money that you kind of feel like it's worth it. But we're going to make sure to keep you in that range where you make just enough money that it feels to you like you're getting somewhere, then we're gonna yank that rug out from under you a little bit, and guess what you're supposed to do? Oh, I, oh my s subscriber growth is stagnating. Video creators, or <clears throat> YouTube creators, or pick any of the channels that evangelizes about YouTube. Pick any one of them. What's the solution to when YouTube pulls the rug out from under you? Oh, they're not promoting my videos anymore. That's your fault. Same thing a multi-level marketing company does. That's your fault. You're not doing something right. You're the one who's not promoting things properly. You're the one who, you're, you're completely at fault because guess what? You're your own boss. You're the boss. You are running a business. You are building a brand. Okay, yeah, you are, except the problem is you're not. You're not doing it for you. You don't actually control your shit. Because guess what? If you try to decouple from YouTube, who's going to follow you to BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, any of these other things? Who's going to follow you? Who's going to pay you money? Are you going to get ad revenue from that? Hell no. You think you're going to get monetized on alternative platforms that barely have one foot in the pond of money? No. You think you're going to get enough traffic from BitChute or Rumble or Odyssey to make enough money through your Patreon, Subscribestar, uh, Libera Pay, etc., you know, PayPal? You think you're going to make enough revenue from those to justify doing your video stuff full time? Hell no! YouTube is where it's at because YouTube's made sure that YouTube's where it's at and that other people can't be where it's at. YouTube was willing to be a loss leader and be very generous in the beginning. That gets you in the ecosystem, and once you're invested in that ecosystem, that's where everybody else is. And because social is the one type of media, the one type of website, where you have to have other people or it will not work. Social websites are this way. E-commerce, different thing. People can find you, people can show up, people can leave. There's not necessarily momentum. <clears throat> because as long as you have your little eShop up and it's searchable somewhere on the internet and search isn't completely controlled by, oh, I don't know, Google, the people who run YouTube, um, 
people can find your website and buy stuff from you without having to pay Google or go through Google's ecosystem or whatever. They can search up DuckDuckGo or Quant or Yandex or whatever and find your little e-commerce website and potentially buy product and services from you through there. But with social, it's not that way. The problem with YouTube is that you have to provide something that people are willing to pay money for, but you don't get that customer list, so to speak. You don't get to know who the people actually are that are subscribed to your channel. You don't get their email addresses. You don't get the money from them directly. All of this stuff is obfuscated from you, the supposed business owner, the, the creator, the person who supposedly owns your channel, owns your brand, owns your traffic, blah, blah, blah. No, it all comes from the generosity of big corporate YouTube and you don't have any way to walk away. You have no control over anything. These channels that tell you about how you should build your channel, that tell you how you can grow and be successful on YouTube, they exist solely to keep you in the ecosystem. They exist to tell you that if there's anything going wrong, it's because you're doing something wrong. It's not YouTube. The algorithm isn't at fault. It's not the algorithm that's stopping you from being successful. The algorithm just feeds users what they want. And isn't it funny that somehow users all want Jimmy Kimmel and CNN and MSNBC? Isn't it interesting that that's what people all seem to want? Huh, funny how that works, even though all of those suck. No, the algorithm does not give users what they want. The algorithm does, in fact, pick and choose certain people, certain things, in certain ways. I know because I looked at my own success and I thought about how it came to be. Where did this 35,000 subscriber influx come from? What happened? Because I didn't make a video and, and just suddenly get, you know, millions of views and tens of thousands of new subscribers overnight. I made a Windows 11 video and it took a year. It took a whole year before this video took off. This video had something to the tune of like a couple thousand views at the most a year after it was created. If the algorithm shows people what they want to see, then why didn't all of these people find my video a year prior? And the truth is, and this is what they don't want you to know, it really is a lottery. And in fact, they will tell you so. They will not tell you so directly, but they will tell you that it's a lottery. You sort of buy a ticket by making a video and you might be lucky one day. They don't say that. In fact, they'll tell you, they'll adamantly tell you it's not a lottery, just like how a multi-level marketing company will tell you it's not a pyramid scheme. They will make sure that you stay in the system. It's always your fault. It's almost like being in an abusive relationship, frankly. Um, th that's actually the best analogy that I've come up with for what YouTube does to the people that make the content on the website. It's an abusive relationship. YouTube constantly squeezes down on the people that make the content that make their platform work. They don't share more revenue than they have to because that's how business works. But they've also made sure that no competitors could possibly spring up and take over without a decade or so of work and some really bad times at YouTube. Maybe those bad times are coming, maybe not. But I know I've been posting to BitChute for several years. I think at least five years at this point, I've been posting crap to BitChute. My BitChute channel is not exactly taking off. Yeah, no alternatives to YouTube. They've monopolized the market. They can abuse you at will. And if you try to leave YouTube, what will happen is you'll find that there's no money to be made. It's very difficult to make money if you don't already have a following or you don't go on to YouTube, the only big platform where you can get mass distribution, and play the video lottery. In the case of my video, what happened is that I played the video lottery and I lost for a year. But YouTube occasionally recycles videos that have not really gotten much traction to see if, oh, maybe somebody, maybe there's some interest you know, even though this video wasn't successful the first couple times we threw it in the lottery, every month or so we'll throw it in front of a couple of people. If those people actually click on it this time, then maybe we'll promote it to a couple more people. That's actually how the algorithm works. It throws it up in front of someone in a suggested feed or a home screen or whatever. If people click on your video and don't just scroll past it, not even seeing it in most cases, just blazing right past it, if they actually click on it, 
oh, then you've won the YouTube lottery. And if these few, you know, three or four people, if one of them actually clicks on it, then they might feed it to three or four more people. And that starts the pyramid. And it keeps going down. Well, if, if, we, if it keeps on getting more and more success this way, surely, okay, that's what the viewers want. Except the problem is if those three or four people that see your video at first don't click on it and they scroll by, pew, that's the end of it. You have to already have a large following to even maintain any traction on the platform. If you leave the platform, you have to already have built a large following on the platform to continue to be financially successful. The only winning move is not to play. Do not start a YouTube channel unless you just wanna post stuff for fun like I did at first. I posted stuff for fun. I'm back to just posting stuff for fun. I very quickly realized the folly of this whole YouTube system and I'm just posting this for fun. Um, and also as a warning to you, you will not succeed on YouTube, but you will have no shortage of channels, no shortage of YouTube creator channels that want nothing more than for you to pay a consulting fee to them to, for them to tell you how to be successful. <clears throat> oh, well, you need to work harder. You need to learn how to do this. You need to learn how to do that. You're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. You need to learn more. You need to learn more. You need to learn more. It's not even necessarily about the quality of your content. If you wonder why so much of YouTube seems to be the same, it's because YouTube doesn't cater to quality content. It caters to content that keeps people sucked into the YouTube ecosystem. The only content that matters on YouTube is stuff that keeps people on YouTube. That's it. That means stuff with a real quick hook at the beginning that sort of gives away the video. It's got to get that hook in right there at the beginning. It's got to be at least eight to ten minutes long because if it's not long enough, then it's not keeping eyes on YouTube long enough. And if it's not doing that, then YouTube doesn't want it around. Short videos have a harder time gaining traction because if it's too short, the watch time is too low. It lowers your average watch time. It reduces the amount of recommendations you get. Blah, blah, blah. You kind of get where this is going. And these creator channels will have no problem telling you that you need to make longer videos that are more interesting to the audience that you're trying to cater to. And that keeps you in YouTube cranking out content for peanuts, you know, potentially not even being able to get into the YouTube partner program in the first place, but you're creating content. You're working for free. You're working for YouTube for free they are probably still running ads on your videos even though they won't share any of it with you they get paid from your videos your videos being there implicitly supports the system so having all these small failing creators that are failing not necessarily because of the content they make but because YouTube doesn't want you to succeed unless you're willing to work harder spend more money produce more content for free for YouTube YouTube does not want you to succeed. They're not invested in your success. They don't care about your success. You don't matter. The only winning move is not to play. Don't start a freaking YouTube channel. That's all that I'm saying. This whole video, this like, I've recorded 26 minutes of raw footage at this point, and the whole video, the entire purpose of it is solely to tell you, don't waste your time starting a YouTube channel, maintaining a YouTube channel, the only reason you should have a YouTube channel at all is if you're doing it for fun, for yourself. Do it because you want to share things with yourself. And even then, maybe it's not worth it. Just think about it for a minute. Posting on YouTube supports YouTube. I feel bad that I've posted so much crap on YouTube at this point because of that. And the only reason that I keep it up is because every two months I get like a $180 check from them. And I'm starting to wonder if it's worth the price that I pay because of supporting them and letting, and a, I'm effectively enabling YouTube to be abusive sons of bitches because my content continues to be up on YouTube. What's wrong with me? Don't let it happen to you. And you know what? Maybe it makes me a hypocrite for leaving my stuff up and taking the money for a little while. But you know what? I'm starting to think maybe I'll nuke it all. But even if I turn off ads or monetization, it doesn't mean it turns off ads anymore. Like, what am I supposed to do? You know what? I'll leave that up to you. Go down to the comment section and tell me what you want me to do. Tell me what you think I should do. 
with all my content that I've made for YouTube for free over the years. Because even though I didn't fall into the trap of making YouTube my source of income and letting them dictate to me what I have to do to continue making the money that I'd already worked under, other, under, other, under previously defined terms to make, what do you think I should do? What is your solution to this problem? Do I nuke it all and exclusively post to YouTube alternatives? Do I not even do that and just post little trailers somewhere that tell people to go back to my website, jodybruchon.com, where you should be going? What should I do? Because I feel like at this point, almost anything's better than letting YouTube continue to make money off of me, given how abusive and horribly evil they are. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Take care.